Hey, what's going on? Before we get into this week's podcast, I have to let you know this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, huh? Guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up, bluechew.com. Blue Chew, it's a unique online service. It delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive the prescription within days. Pretty awesome, man. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made right here in the U.S and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Look, man, they always say first impressions are important. What about lasting impressions, wink, wink, nudge, nudge? They say there's nothing sexier than confidence, and Blue Chew can help give you confidence where it counts. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal just for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use promo code DADCAST at checkout. Just pay five bucks in shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code DADCAST to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. And speaking of, let's do it. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome back. It is another episode of DadCast. I am JP, of course. That guy is Nick Martin. Nick, how you doing, buddy? Dude, I'm good. It's finally warm. I know. And you know what? We're so far ahead still that by the time this one drops, it might be freaking fall again. I know. We'll probably have snow on the ground again. Right. So if you are watching this and it happens to be October or November, wherever you may be, uh, just know that this literally was recorded on the 1st of June in the year of our Lord, 2023. Today on the show, man, we've got an amazing guest. Um, he's formerly a contestant from Jordy Shore. He's a finalist on Vendetta, Total Madness, Spies, Lies, and Allies. <gasps> he also... Competed on Final Reckoning, War of the Worlds, War of the Worlds 2, and Double Agents. He is one of the more notorious characters from MTV's The Challenge. Please welcome Mr. Kyle Christie. How you doing, buddy? Whoa, yeah. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, man. I, I wish that I could have you every day in my life introduce me like that. To everyone <laughs> Dude, we need to get TJ to hire him to introduce all the contestants on the challenge. That would be so It would be incredible. Why? It would be incredible. Although, although it would fuck it up and take up the entire show. You know, we, <laughs> yeah. the only way that would have been better is if I had taken the time to memorize it instead of, you know, diverging the eyes just a little bit you know but uh i guess that's kind of what i've been known for I, i've worked in radio for years and i uh, do introductions on stage and blah 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 so thank you um and if you're willing to pay an exorbitant amount of money i will absolutely follow you around wherever you go kyle christie <laughs> all right brother so the very first question that we like to ask on dadcast it is a rite of passage uh is are you a dad I am a dad, yes. I was a dad 20 months ago. He's 20 months old now. And I know I don't want to be one of them dads that is like, oh, my son's 27 months old. But I, I don't know else how to say no, it. No, it's perfect. You know? It's it's so funny you say that because I was thinking as you said it, I was about to say, hey, Nick, so Kyle is still in the months section of when you ask <laughs> how old your kid is. And this is... It, at 23 months, man, that's it. Okay. Just so See, you this know, is, this is an argument my wife and I have all the time. She's like, our son is, oh, he just turned three. He's 36 months. I'm like, baby, he's fucking three. Come on. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> so yeah, at 23 months, you can still, you can still call that out because you know, year and a half, year, almost two, whatever. But once 24 months hits, your, your kid's two years old. I, I, call, yeah. I completely agree. I completely agree. Um, it's just in that weird phase at the moment, isn't it? Where it's like you're right. going from one to two, but as soon as he gets two, he's two, two and a half, nearly three. What's his name? That's it. Crew. I named him Crew. Yeah. Uh, Crew Jacks Christie. You know why I did that, right? It's because 
I like the whole America cowboy uh, cool biker thing. Okay. All right. And I think that sounds like he's like, like an extra off Sons of Anarchy. He's yes. An extra right. off like a, like a Yellowstone or something like that, like a series, uh, like a season. And uh, that's why I basically did that. I want to move to America one day with my uh, partner. And we thought uh, Crew Jacks would be a cool name. I can already imagine him with like slicked back hair and his Harley Davidson with loads Absolutely. Of like, as long as he doesn't end up, you know, going head first into a semi at some point yeah, on exactly. his Harley, that, then, that then we're good. Tough. But yeah, man, that's a great name. I agree. As oh, being yeah. one of those American who likes to consider himself somewhat cool, but is a big nerd in disguise, I wholeheartedly agree. That's a fantastic name. So that's yeah. your first kid, 20 months old. I did a little diving on you and Nick told me a little bit about you and your past and the challenge. So this yeah. question should be pretty good for you. I think how yeah. has becoming a father changed you, Kyle Christie? It has completely and utterly changed me. Um, before I was a dad, I was uh, quite selfish to be fair. I was quite a selfish guy. Like I used to like um, only think about me. And then once you have a kid, I mean, you guys know it's like, Everything is the kid first. The kid first, right? How is if we can't be happy unless our children are happy? I find that right. Then did you changing. did you foresee that happening when you became no. a dad? Okay, and no, was becoming no. a dad a surprise? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, what were the right. reactions that day? It was you know it was twenty nine months ago, give or take. She, you know, okay. All of a sudden, Let something me. happened. Hey, Kyle, guess what? You're going to be a dad. Boom, emotions. Let me set the scene for you. Let All me right. Set this door for you. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. So it was New Year's Eve, right? And I was like, right, let's let's let let's get everyone over. Let's have a party. We're gonna have a party. It's great. And uh, for a joke, we're like, yeah, like why, why don't you get a pregnancy test and we'll like put it on the table for everyone and like like they'll shit themselves in the first say it. Right. And my girlfriend was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. It'll be funny. She took the pregnancy test and she was pregnant. Oh, <laughs> right, <Ooh>. real. <laughs> I spent the whole Jokes New on Year's you. Eve my whole family. I know, I know, I know. Uh, I spent the whole of the New Year's Eve around my family, just terrified. And I was like, I didn't tell them obviously because it was only like what four or five weeks in or three right. weeks in or something. And I just spent the whole night with a drink in my hand, just staring at my girlfriend <laughs> and just like, just like this, just like absolutely scared, shitless. And then my brothers were like, "Oh, you don't seem like yourself. What are you doing? Like, let's have a drink. Let's have a shot." And I'm just like, "Nope, I'm okay. I'm just going to sit here." And then like, my girlfriend, obviously not drinking because she didn't know what we were going to like, what the next step was. And right. stuff. And it, yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. it was so scary, man. And then it, this was the new year. Okay. Yeah. Can you, can you guys remember COVID, like the, the, the height of COVID in January, remember when everywhere was shut down, like yeah. everywhere in the United States, everywhere in England, everywhere shut down. So I had to spend January, February, March in the house with no one around, just me, my girlfriend and my unborn baby. Yeah, we were we were so scared. We were honestly so scared. And then when you start to tell people and you see the reaction, you get a bit more excited and you're like, all right, shit, we can do this. And um, I don't regret nothing. I'm, I'm so glad we had him. And I'm so glad I'm a dad now. That's so amazing, man. I know it's yeah. scary that first time. And especially. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that New Year's Eve. Best, that's uh, best find out story we've had. Yes, yeah, I think so. That was, man. that's yeah, a decent that one. What about yeah. what about, uh, about Mama? It was at her first child, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it was, it was first child. that. So both was, of you were just like, "What the fuck?" You know. Well, well, she she kept on bursting into tears throughout the party of the New Year's, and people just thought she was emotional. It was <laughs> right. New Year's Eve, and yeah. like it was a new. And um, my mom, ma my mom came over to us. My mom was like, "It's a new beginning for all of us, New Year's Eve." And I was like, <laughs> "You have you know, no grandma." <laughs> <laughs> So fast forward then, man, nine months later, it's what, September, October, give or take? Uh, uh, yes. So it was due 6th of September. He came a week late. My partner um, made me go to the hospital, drive to the hospital four times. I drove to the hospital. And I know she was about pushing another human being out of a vagina, so it should have, I should have been cool with it, you know, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I was pretty fucking tired, and yeah. I'm not going to lie, it was like throughout the night, and I remember the, the third time I went, it was like 3 a.m. in the morning, and she was like, she was like, well, why don't you put your head down for like five to ten minutes, get some sleep uh, to get ready for the morning for when we go into the hospital, I was like, yeah, yeah, cool, I'll, I'll go and have ten minutes sleep, and I'll be right back, okay, 
I was asleep for about seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you miss the birth? Oh, no, I didn't miss the birth. Okay. I, uh, I came in the because we were at home at the time. So I came in the bathroom and uh, what I can only be described is my partner looked the worst she'd ever looked ever. She was like up all night, like screaming, like my mom and dad were there as well. So my dad covered my back. Um, but it was pretty intense. It was pretty intense. Uh, and then I took her to the hospital and then we had the baby. She was only in labor for about four hours. I think she'd done most of the labor at home, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it was pretty intense. So yeah, that's... The... <laughs> now, did you... Did it Did it come like... like here's a baby. Boom. Was that when yeah, reality they... set in for you? Yeah. Did they do that thing to you guys where like um, they just leave the room? They just they give they give, me, they give me the baby and then they just all left the room and I was like sitting there by myself with this baby and I'm like, <laughs> uh, no, no one's explained what I do now. No, no, at least for uh, my experience is the nurses were. I mean, it was a good hour or two after the birth there, you know, making sure everything's right, cleaning her up, doing all the stuff, making sure mom's good, and then they finally left us alone. But yeah, yeah. it's crazy, when man. Sophie was born. It was really weird. Because, like, all my other kids, same experience. It was, like, an hour, four hours of nurses, doctors, making sure everything's good. When our latest daughter was born four months ago, we, my wife, had her. And then within 20 minutes, everybody was out of the room. And we're like, are you going to give her a bath? Like, she's gross. <laughs> <laughs> she's bloody and sticky. And she looks like she, like, went through a milkshake. Like, what's, what the hell's happening here? And then, like, two hours later, the nurse comes in. She's like... Yeah, we're we're gonna give her a bath tomorrow. We want all the stuff to sit on her skin. It's really good for her. And I'm like, this is new. I've had seven, yeah. This is no, like that's true. I'm that's I mean, even ten years ago. So my daughter, she's ten. She turned ten yesterday, and of course, oh, okay. uh, you know, every birthday rolls around. You you think back to that day and the birth and all that stuff. But same thing, uh, Nick. You know, she she was a water burst. So she came out of the water, but still covered in all the white goop. Yeah, and uh, they they left it on her, but. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh, maybe, she maybe, looked, maybe with uh, Liam, it was COVID. Maybe that's why they washed him. Maybe. I don't know. It was weird. But she looked like a purple alien yeah. when she came out. It was. It yeah. Was, yeah. That it's was not crazy pleasant. stuff. Like, I got it. Oh, <laughs> my, my, mine looked like my dad. And and uh, if you look at all, like all of us, my dad's the worst one out of all of us. So like, I was like, what? I was like, how did I get roped into this? How, how did he look like my dad out of everyone? <laughs> <laughs> but that changed, right? Don't you know, changed. a little yeah, bit. Changed. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's good looking now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dad. You know, when you see this, you know, I'm sure you're used to it though by now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So man, 20 months old. Oh, that's crazy. Is, is he, is he talking much yet? So he, he doesn't talk. He says like one words. So he'll be like, uh, dada. He'll be like, uh, baby. He'll be, he's not stringing sentences together yet, but he's still, he's, he's getting there. Um, my, my brother, weirdly, my brother got pregnant at the same time, like a couple of months later. So my mom and dad had to deal with both kids <laughs> being born like four months apart from each other, yeah. three months apart. But uh, she, I don't know. I think girls are smarter, man. I think they're honestly smarter because they just like she talks so much and she just doesn't shut up. And it's like she like they're so more advanced. I think girls. Trust but me. He started. I think he started. Yeah, he started walking before her, but she started speaking first. Yeah. No, they're smarter. I mean, I, my yeah. son may be able to overhear me. He's he's in the other room over there. Uh, <laughs> he's he's about to be thirteen in August. Uh, but like I said, my daughter's ten. She's way smarter. I mean, even even now, it's it's yeah. it, 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 in, in the common sense factor too, like street smart. It's uh, yeah, it's, yeah he, it's, does, he doesn't sense danger, my little boy. He doesn't understand pain or danger. Dude. He'll fall off something, you'll hurt his head, <laughs> and he'll be like, "Right, let's do it again." Yep. Yeah. My my. Why my didn't you learn something from your first thing. experience? Yeah, my three year old, like he's jumping off a. He climbed up on a bookshelf and freaking jumped off onto a hardwood <laughs> floor. I'm like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> like, it was awesome. I'm like, yeah. okay. I'm like, man, thank God we have good health insurance. Yeah. Like, poor kid, dude. He's like, he's out running around. He's he's at that awkward stage now where he runs and he's like top heavy or something. So he makes it about two feet down the road. It's all it's just yeah. He's got his knees are all scraped up. And do you ever get that the doctor thing? they look at us funny, like they want to like talk to him in a separate room. Do your parents be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you'd be kicking him over? Yeah. Do you ever get that thing, right? Where like 
he falls over and he, he it looks a lot worse than he is. And like you think, fuck me, he's definitely broke his neck. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah. he gets up and he's completely fine. You're like, what the hell? Yeah. How yeah, or it, or it sounds worse. Like he they hit their yeah. head. It sounds like the most horrible like watermelon being thrown on the floor. You're like, oh, I you think need to go to the hospital. I think there's actually yeah. a scientific explanation for it. I could be wrong, but I think their bones are still a tad bit bendy. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. doctor said they're like rubber. Yes. Like, yeah. it, it takes a lot to break a kid's bones. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he would have to like jump out of like a third story building or something. And, <laughs> yeah. The do- our doctor's like, they're like cats. They bounce. <laughs> they- <laughs> I can't imagine the doctor saying that to you. The doctor's like, if, if you really want to hurt him, then you're going to have to throw him out of a fit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, dude, like, so so our, our pediatrician's a family friend. So, and like when our son, like when he was like one, he started climbing on stuff and falling off stuff and he'd bump his head. He, he got a big knot on his elbow one time. So like we're constantly going to the doctor. Finally, the doctor's like, dude. They, you can throw them out of a third story building. They're going to bounce. <laughs> They're going to be fine. Unless All right. there's like a lot of blood, a bone sticking through the skin. He's unconscious or a dent. Don't come back. <laughs> like, yeah. A, a, yeah. Dent, a dent is bad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds right. like a call. Kyle, I'm going to get, I'm trying a little personal here. Um, yeah. So you referred to mom as your partner. Yeah. Is, is that, is, is, is that, is it girlfriend? Is it just partner? Are you guys living so it, together? How are you raising this kid? We we live together and she's my girlfriend, but we just never got round to because obviously we had the baby. Right. We never got round to the whole marriage thing. Um hey. I'm pretty sure we'll we'll get there one day. But we don't take you can take solace in the fact, okay? My like I said, my son is going to be 13. My daughter is 10. Mom is the same. We're still together. We're not married yet. So we're pushing, okay. pushing 14 years. Haven't gotten married at this point. It's like, pff, fuck it. What's yeah. the point? You what's, know, it's well, like, what's, what's your excuse? Cause my excuse is the whole baby thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know what my excuse was. It, it's, it's, I, better, like, I haven't down, had man. to use it in years because I think just because it, it kind of, uh, it, it morphed into, well, he doesn't want to get married. So now, if anyone asks, she's like, I don't want to get married. So now okay. I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, we're good. Yeah, it's yeah. like, <laughs> but at the I've same got, point, got, we got, are married, yeah. you know? Yeah. I've got, I've got a friend, right? My best friend. He is, he met his girlfriend. Well, his, yeah, his partner. He met her when he was 13 years old. And now he's my age. So he's like 31. And they've been together ever since then. And because they didn't, they've been together so long and they're not married. They've just decided they're not going to do it. Yeah. Um, because when, like, when everyone starts to get married in the late twenties, early thirties, they'd already been together for fifteen years. So it was like, what's the point? Right. You know, we're, we're, why do we need a piece of paper? The Which only, I totally understand. The only thing we can think of that would benefit us doing it is tax purposes. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, <laughs> and other than that, you know, maybe when the when the my littlest turns eighteen and we can no longer claim them, maybe then we get married so we could keep getting those benefits of some sort of fashion. Yeah. I don't know, but. <laughs> okay. Now, with that being said, uh, are you going to try for a baby sister? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I would. I would literally try tomorrow. I'm. <laughs> I'm, I'm good for it. Yeah. Well, trying I, parts I do, the best. Yeah. 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 That's that's that that's the best part, isn't it? From <laughs> from there, it's all downhill. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I did want. So I started off right. Okay. Everyone wants two, don't they? They want the one two different ones. They want a girl and a boy, so they've got that different experience of like girls and boys. Right. But I feel like now because my brother's had a girl and they're getting raised like twins, uh, the bro- the cousins, um, cause we're so close with my brother and they're getting, I, I kind of think I want another boy, you know? Um, cause I know, I know she, she wants a girl. My partner Vicky wants a girl, but I kind of want another boy cause I think there's no stronger bond there. I think brothers have really have really strong bond, yeah. but then again, I did say I'd have three, so the third one would have to be a girl. There you go. There you go. Yeah. That's, so that's, I, I do want I do want two of each, but I want I want I want three. Because I've got a, I've, I have a stepdaughter as well. So both my brother has a sister and my littlest has a sister as well. But you're, there's okay. something to be said about that. My you know my my but my boy he doesn't have a brother and. I think, you know, that ship has sailed when it comes to me and the lady, uh, she, all yeah. the parts are gone. They, you know, they, they took out the factory, put in a playground and yeah. uh, it's just, there's no, 
<laughs> Sounds like something my dad would say. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> That's yeah, go ahead, man. Take credit for it too. Whenever you use it, uh, yeah, it's. And I, I feel bad about that, you know. You know, there's nothing. Maybe you know, I guess I guess adoption. And Nick won't give me any of his 837 kids. So <laughs> I don't know, man. Last night I was like, "Fuck, I should call JP. This is bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> so, so Sophie woke up at 1:30 in the morning, and Liam was just like he was having nightmares. So he's with Mama, and Sophie does not go back to sleep for me. Like she, all she wants to do is talk and play, and. And, it's, and she's hilarious. Like she's four months old, but she is so funny. Like she, she'll lay down and pretend like she's sleeping. So I'm like, oh sweet, I'll close my eyes and she'll pop up and go, Goo. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're still, it, she's four months old. You're still in that like, like hell period, aren't you? You know where she just doesn't sleep and shit, and it's just like, oh my god, this is horrendous. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> and I'll yeah, constantly but it's feeding and changing, changing though, and she'll fall asleep within five minutes. Like I'm like, what the hell? What is so different with your mom and me? Like, yeah. what, like the fun dad? Am I the fun parent? What's what's happening here? Did I mess up and let you watch Rambo with me too many times? Yeah. Like, in the morning? Rambo, <laughs> come on, man! <laughs> He's letting Liam watch Rocky now. Now Sophie's going no, with so, the freaking so last night, Rambo. We Jennifer Lopez is the mother, right? Oh, this movie is like so. It's it's awesome, dude. She's badass in this and so violent. Sophie loves it. Like I try to watch cartoons with Sophie. She's like, she's, a, she starts crying. I turn on a super violent movie. She's all about it. I'm like, I, oh, I, you're going to have to force she's it. She's going to need therapy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Therapy. Exactly. She's like 12, 13 year old. I'm wondering why other people aren't chopping each other's heads off. Right. Yeah. You're wondering why the kids these days are going and, and doing bad things at schools, Nick. I know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm the problem. You are the problem. <laughs> I blame that. I'm going to mute you. That's it. You're done. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nick. Yeah, I, try, I tried Care Bears. It didn't work. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. You know what? You do. Care. Yeah, but uh, and there's something to be said, and there's been scientific proof. Like zero to three years is the biggest sponge era of that brain. And whether they don't realize it or remember those years, it's it's in there, man. So, you know, she's going to be like 18 and be like, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> No, you no, know, she's gonna bring it Sylvester Stallone your ass. So she's gonna she's gonna do the knife action. <laughs> <laughs> Which Rambo was it? <laughs> it was the, the newest one. Oh god, that's the work, Nick. Nick. Oh dude, it's it is like the violence is so realistic. They did such a good job. I'm oh like, Jesus. Well done, Stallone. I, 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 I my do you know my favorite Rambo? It's it's very, very, very like people don't think it's the best. It better one. be first the blood. One, no, no, it's not. See, that's my dad's foot. My, my dad loves the fir, uh, first blood. How many Rambos are there? Five, isn't it? Yeah. Five now? Yeah. There's five. I like the fourth one, the one where he goes when he's the oh, boatman. He's yes. Like going, like, Dude. You know, that's the that's the for me, that's the best one. Yeah. Yes. That's the fourth and the fifth and one. And he rips the guy's really throat really out with his hand. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh god. That's, that that was weird because uh, they brought in family members that's like, okay, where do these family members come from? I didn't know a Rambo had a niece. A Rambo <laughs> yeah. had, a, had a, a brother or sister to make a niece. Like, yeah. Well, from nineteen eighty nine to two thousand and ten, that there's no you know, that's yeah. it happened. He had kids, he had like whatever, Nick. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Come on. That's well, great. First blood, though, kid. for me, man, that's it's, you know, it really shows that Sylvester Stallone was actually a pretty decent actor when he's, yeah. he's, when he's breaking Soul down at the yeah. end of the movie yeah. and he's like, and he's got no legs. It was, oh, it was <laughs> a great flick. Oh, I see. What did I tell you about going off the rails, man? Now we're talking about friggin' Rambo, but it begs the question then, Kyle Christie, if we're going to talk about movies and TV and being that you are um, a part of that, uh, yep. what is your... I mean, if you were to pick like a top three all time movie, wait there, I've got I've got them written in my phone for any time that anyone asks me this. Oh, uh, you get a okay. I'm going to ask you a good question <laughs> later though that you don't get all the time, and with a great backstory too. Well, no, no, people don't people don't ask me this. I just write lists. So oh, like okay, really, love it. Really weird, like okay, that, or, it, top five it, movies it, in it, Kyle it. Christie's world. Top, top, uh, top five movies, I would say. Okay, so you've got to have a Christmas movie in there. I'd say Home Alone, but that's just a Christmas movie. Uh, but other movies is Gladiator. That's the best movie ever made. Are you not entertained? Okay, yes. Yeah, that that that's it. And everyone says that in the challenge. You know, everyone says that line. Yeah. I'm always like, you have no idea what what that's about. Do you? Do uh, I'll have my revenge in this life or the next. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right. Uh, the other movies. Wait, man, that, that was that was the Christmas movie list. I'm trying to. I don't know. Gladiator okay. was a Christmas movie. That's like Die Hard. No, no, I just <laughs> had that in my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you it's know like, what movie I like? I don't. Know, I don't know if you guys have seen this. Have you seen Billy Elliot before? Not yet. I've I've, I've seen previews for it. Billy Elliot. So it's, it's, it's it's set where I'm from. That's exactly like where I'm from. So I think that like. There's a lot to say for it. Yeah, you need you need to watch that shit. I, I'll, do you know what it is? I'll send you after this. Billy Elliot. Um, I also like Lord of the Rings. I would put Lord of the Rings in there okay. as well. A two thousand dance Rings. musical. Yeah, it's it's not a musical. It was a movie before a musical. Okay. You need to watch that. You got send me a film. link in the emails, man. We'll we'll check. I'll it send you a link. I'll send you a link. A British coming of age comedy drama film. Do you know what else I like? I like Armageddon. You know, that cheesy 90s movie. Uh, that's movie my, the that's, that's oh, my yeah. lady's favorite freaking flick of all time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, she, and she cries every time. It's like, how can you cry at the same scene like 37 times? I also cried. It. It's, it's it's upsetting. You know, right. I hear you. You know what gets me still is <laughs> the damn Lion King, man. I saw that yeah. in theaters when he went to freaking Simba and nudging dad. Just, just, mm. Oh, God. I was uh, I was one years old when that. Was it? <laughs> I know yeah, I did so the I, math. I, I, I could, that. I could, sorry. I know I look great for my age and all, but I could totally be your dad, <laughs> Kyle. The, the, the numbers match. You, Nick would have been about 14. I would have been about 17. I think. Give I, or still, take, I still but. could have made it happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, we know, Nick, we know <laughs> that, that's the, you two, it's not, you two, it's, like if you were the same age, Oh, say in your twenties would probably have destroyed the world together if you catch my drift. I'm just saying, <laughs> it's you go on that path. It, it, hell, me too. What am I talking I about? Had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so top Same. five uh, bands in Kyle Christie's world. Uh, I love Kings of Leon. Um, I'm a big David Grohl fan. Um, who else? I like a bit of Coldplay. If I was, I was going to throw Coldplay in there, I would definitely do that because it's like. Uh, it's it's my girlfriend can like listen to them as well, right? As, as much as me, and uh, also who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Nirvana when they were around. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm gonna throw a, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a couple at you and, and get your thoughts and opinions. Pink Floyd, Iron Maiden. Yeah, yeah, good, good. good. That's that's more my dad's ear. He loves them. Like I'm saying, I can be your dad. <laughs> Oh, I got to meet this dad character of yours. Yeah, we should. Hey, I'm going to throw I'm going to throw this into that, into that. Nick, you're right there. You're exactly what I'm thinking. Uh, let me ask you this and, and, and completely honest. OK, we don't care if you're having the shittiest of time right now. Admit it. But if you <laughs> are actually enjoying yourself, Kyle, what are the odds on you coming back? I don't know. A few months from now, hell, even a year, but doing it with your dad. For 100%. another episode, my my, my dad and would do your, it. Your dad let, him your have, let him have a few drinks first. Okay, and um, uh, well, I'll have a few drinks as well, and we'll do it like at the pub. It'll be funny, dude. Okay, we'll, yeah, we'll both come on at the pub, and we'll just we'll be hammered. It'll be hilarious. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, I'm absolutely I'll, in. Good. All right, Nick, I'll probably get, get myself fired from every TV show I've ever done. <laughs> 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 Good segue. So, Nick, um, I know, I know this is your time to shine, my friend. Uh, I know you got some questions about the challenge because you love that show. Uh, now's your chance, brother. So, how has becoming a dad changed the challenge for you? So, when I was, um, <clears throat> when I first found out about the kid, right, I went away on the challenge and he was, he was six months in the belly. So, it was three months before he came out. And it was horrendous being away because it was like, you feel like you're abandoning them. You feel like it's like, shit, like I have literally left my partner and she could have the baby at any time. Um, Cause it, we go away on the challenge for like two months to three months. So when I got back, it was like two weeks before we had the baby. So it was pretty intense. Mm. Um, also another fact about the challenge, which you'll be interested to know. Can you remember, I don't know if you've watched every season, but can you remember when I got beaten that whole brawl off Fessy, okay? Yeah, yeah. So I um, we worked it out with the doctors, and when I got beat off that whole brawl off Fessy, I came home early, and I hadn't seen my girlfriend in two months. We had sex on that night, and my doctor worked it out that that was the night we conceived. He says that them few days is when you conceived. 
So if Fess, if I beat Fessy in that whole ball, I wouldn't be a dad right now. Isn't if he didn't nuts? have a go- if he didn't have a god complex already, now he's definitely got one. <laughs> <laughs> <That's awesome>. <laughs> <laughs> Best oh, thing I ever done was getting run through by that big guy. Oh man! Isn't it crazy Fessy. how the world works, man? I know. I think it's. Oh, that's, yeah. that's nuts. If, if wow. those, if those, you ever see, you know, yeah. the, the movie Benjamin Buttons. Yeah. Okay. And there's that one scene where if everything did not go in particular order on that perfect day, you know, fate wouldn't have had its way, et cetera, et cetera. And I know I think of that a lot about, yeah. you know, if, if, if one thing we're talking maybe timing of two seconds that happened 14 years ago did not go the way it did. I wouldn't be a dad. I might be dead. And we most certainly wouldn't be here right now having this conversation. Yeah. Now, all three of us together and all the things in your life as well had to go that route as well for us to be it's right here. It's effect, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a butterfly it's effect. Yeah. Not wings crazy to think. Happens and- all right. Yeah. Sorry, Nick. I interrupted again. Go. <laughs> Um, yeah. So what, what is your favorite so far? You, you've been on quite a few seasons. What's your favorite location that you've been to? Um, the favorite location. I'm trying to think. Okay. None of the cold places. They sucked. Uh, Iceland was beautiful, but it was, it's kind of sucky, man. It's, 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 it's so cold. It's so, and when you're trying to compete, you just everything. So the producers threw in like every single thing had cold water in it and it just <laughs> sucks. Um, well, I would say the favorite location I've ever done was Spain, south of Spain. It was warm. Um, it was, it wasn't as intense back then because it was my first season and the challenges were just better. It's like, if you're going to lose, I want to be warm when I lose. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Exactly. So who's your favorite competitor? Favorite competitor out of everyone. Um, I would say Devin is in there. Devin's my boy. Uh, Johnny is in there as well. It's got to be him. Uh, but I would say funniest, funniest to be around. Okay. And, and don't get us wrong. I love him. I'm not laughing with him. I'm laughing at him. It's Nelson. (laughs) Nelson. Honestly, if Nelson was a dad, you should get him on this podcast. He's, he doesn't even mean to be funny and he's fucking funny, man. Well, Uh, since you said that, Johnny and Devin, you're friends with Johnny them. Devin West. You're friends yeah. with those guys. So if they are dads, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You just go yeah, ahead. Yeah, and dads, we've had them. not dads on the podcast. Get West on it. Get Nelson on. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Get West on it. West is a dad now. Well, he's yeah, going to be a dad in a few yeah. months. Yeah. Yeah. Who is the most famous person in your opinion in your phone that you have the phone number for right now? Ooh, shit! I don't know, man. Um, there's a girl from my show called Charlotte. She, she's she's pretty famous now. Um, uh, she's and I speak to her nearly like every other day, but she's she's up there now. What show? Charlotte uh, probably. Uh Geordie Shaw, but she does like a lot oh. of different Ameri- like uh, English stuff and like loads of different shows and stuff. Um there's a girl called Vicky Patterson on in the UK as well. She's she's quite famous now, who did Geordie Shaw. Uh, but now she does all these different other shows in the UK. Um, but America wise, I, I haven't a clue. I couldn't nice. tell you. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. Right, JP, who's the most famous person in your phone? Uh, Johnny Depp. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. wow that, 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 that's totally blew my story out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> because I, here's the deal. I don't want him to change his phone number. <laughs> He probably already has, you know, he probably already has, you know, it's been three, four years, so yeah. it, it, it might be changed, but there, there's plenty in there. It's been because this podcast, man, it's, you he's, know, he's half the of them, man, isn't he? Nah, he's he is, a man, Johnny Depp. He's pretty cool. He, uh, so, you know, I know all that shit was going on with him. Okay. Uh, he, he came to my hometown and everyone was like, what did the he hell? play with What's Jeff Beck, Depp right? Doing here? Yeah. 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 Yep. So he was, he was, he was, he was, yeah, he was, he was touring with his band or something. And, um, he was like in all the pubs and the bars and shit. And we were like, we walked past him. We were like, <laughs> Jack Sparrow. Yeah. yeah. And like, like you, you want to say Johnny it's... Depp, you want to say Mr. You want to say Mr. Depp or, or Johnny or something yeah. like that. And you just end up screaming Jack Sparrow <laughs> yeah. in his face. <laughs> he did a show uh, here 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's called uh, the Brit Festivals. They do every summer here where we live. Um, it's part of the Hollywood Vampires. And at the time, I was working at a radio station. So, you know, we had the whole hookup and meet and greets backstage, giving away tickets, et cetera, et cetera. So it was time for us to go and uh, meet the band. And it's not just Johnny. It's Joe Perry of Aerosmith. It's Alice Cooper. It's, the, oh, cool, you know, man. Matt Sorum, the drummer of Guns N' Roses, the bass yeah. player of Stone Temple Pilot. I mean, it's just, it's a smorgasbord of just crazy talent. So we're back, we're back there. And, and of you know, I've met so many famous people through this job and doing that. It. It's, I don't really fanboy much anymore. You know, it's just like, you know, they're just, yeah. they're other people, man. It's like, hey, nice to meet you, whatever, et cetera. But I don't know, Johnny, I, I, as soon as I pulled the curtain, there he was, I was like, oh, it's Johnny. But my she lady, got- <laughs> she, she's just like, ah, ah, like, she's like freaking out. I'm like, you got to calm the fuck down. Okay. This is, this, you're, this is embarrassing. Okay. Come on. Be and, cool. Yeah. You're embarrassing me in front of Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then she <laughs> goes up to meet him and she, the, every, then, she, then she went cool. You ready? And she's like, she looks at him. She looks at me. She looks back at him and goes, can I kiss him? <laughs> and then he, he all of a sudden, he's a like, homie. Oh, he looks over, he's like, I don't want your, your man, you know, be kicking my ass. I'm like, you know what, bro? She's going home with me. Have at it. And uh, anyway, my lady kissed Johnny Depp. And I think for the next, I think it's still paying off to be perfectly honest. Yeah. But yeah. And that's my Johnny Depp story there. Who's the most yeah, famous person crazy. in your phone, Nick? Uh, It's a toss up between TJ Lavin, Randy Couture, Brett yeah. Young. I got Randy I Couture's number. Thank you. Finally. Yeah. yeah I, I yeah. begged him for that Randy number Couture's for like two cool months. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Brett Young's probably the most famous person in there, but it's, that's cool. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So Dude, that, the Hollywood vampire story though, like yeah. crazy thing is we were backstage. My son is a drummer. He's getting drum lessons from Matt and we're like, we had dinner with the band and stuff. It was like, it was super cool. Like, and I was fanboying over Robert DeLeo from Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah. You were. Like, Holy shit. <laughs> it's, it's <STP. laughs> okay, I'm trying to let's see if I can pull it up here. That's what I love about podcasts. I could totally stop talking and look away from you guys, and it's all good. This isn't like live radio where I get in trouble for dead air. But this is a good opportunity for you, Nick, to you know talk if I'm not talking. I'm going to jump in and uh, start doing the Fast Five because we're actually almost out of time. We're not close to out of time. We're having a good time, right, Kyle? I mean, we're having a good time, but... I still, I still have to go sell cars. <laughs> so. Oh, you damn car sales. I'm almost there. I'm almost okay. there. I'm going to ask one question. What's your funniest yeah. dad fail so far? What's my funniest what? Dad fail. We've all failed. Um, uh, so when I was uh, changing the diaper, okay? Changing the diaper, whatever. Change the diaper, put it down. I was like, oh my God, that was horrible. It's stunk. And then like, I, I'm, I'm quite a... a, a a twisty guy so like i move my hands a lot i bite my nails a lot i um i'm just moving around all the time i've got adhd so i'm really bad with that uh i went to bite my nail and as i'm biting my nail i just taste something oh god I'm like, <laughs> oh <laughs> fuck <laughs> I ate baby shit. <laughs> it's you know we we probably we probably all done that. <laughs> uh, I'm drinking baby yeah. piss, you know. Yeah. It, it's just... <laughs> I didn't I didn't know about the whole TP thing over the wiener. Like yeah, yeah. yeah if, if you leave it out in the air too long, you're gonna get pissed on. I didn't yeah. know. That. Yeah. <laughs> so so it happened. Oh, there we go. You like the shirt? Yes. No. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Look how cool is that? He's like he's like dressed like a, a like he, a little bit like a pirate. As he, well. I know he just didn't have the hair or the hat, but he's, he's got that he's got that that haircuts off uh, Harry Potter off the when you remember when he's doing Harry Potter. That's yeah that's the haircut he yeah yeah yep, yep. the side it's so cool. Sorry, that Nick. Was probably four one of more. Coolest concerts I've ever been to. Yeah, it was good. Like, that 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 yeah. was that was fantastic was, time. Yeah, the music like oh man, it was crazy. Alice Cooper can still sing, so that was badass. Okay. What's the best thing about being a dad so far for you? Um, I would say it constantly makes you look forward to doing normal tasks. So say like, oh, I'm going out a day. You're going out with a kid, so it's going to be more fun. Um, you're going on vacation, okay? It's going to be better because the kid's there. They're an improvement. As much as they, they do stress you out, they're an improvement on stuff that you already do. It's like the best antidepressant in the world. 
Wait till you add two more of them to the mix and you go on vacation, though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I want to have a conversation with you when that happens, but I duly noted. So, so okay, let's, let's let's talk about the going out into vacations. Where where have you gone out with your kid and what vacations have you gone on? You want you want to hear where I've been with the kids so far? Bear in mind he's only 20 months old. Yeah. I have been to uh Orlando, Florida, Miami, Florida. I've been to Spain, I've been to France, uh, I've been to Italy. Uh, I've been to Scotland. I know that's right next to me, but still counts as a different country. Uh, I've been to Ireland. Uh, where else have I been? I've been to Turkey, and that's that's it so far. Yeah. So how how do you guys do it? Do you have like do you have help, or is it just you and your? Uh, my mom, my mom and dad normally come with us, but it's it, <laughs> it was a lot easier when they were under one when he was under like one. But now it's it's quite hard now. Yeah, yes. they, they're mobile now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we we took our we took our uh, he's three now, but he was one at the time. We took him to Vegas. He's actually been to Vegas twice now. And yeah, oh nice, dude. It's a freaking nightmare. It's a uh, getting from the airport to the shuttle was probably the hardest thing I've ever gone through. Like they should make <laughs> that a challenge. Like that's yeah. the challenge is on MTV's the challenge. <laughs> Get your baby from the plane to the cab. Go. If you you only have mom and dad. You have a stroller and you have a shitload of luggage get from the airport to the shuttle in one piece and make sure your baby's still with you. <laughs> I don't think I could do a big vacation without my parents. Like, cause they're like an extra set of hands, you know, they um, live in sitters. Yeah. 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 They, I, I don't think I could do it without them. Yeah. Got any more Nick? God. Um, yeah. Um, do you have any tips on getting your baby to sleep? <laughs> Uh, um, I'm I'm the worst at this, so it, it's the same with my baby as it is with yours. It's like uh, he goes to his mom, okay? He's asleep straight away. He's done. He's like wants to nestle in. He wants to be a, like a, like a little cuddle buddy and go to sleep. With me, I'm the fun dad. I'm like he wants to play with me. I just can't get him to sleep, and that's why I let my partner do it every time. <laughs> No, no tips. There you go. The tip no, is no. give it to the lady. Okay. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's it. All right. <laughs> Good to know. Um, okay. If you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? Um, it would be, it would be me and my best challenge elimination. You know, the pole wrestling, I would have me winning all the pole wrestles. I'm the nice. pole wrestle champion. I don't know how I've, 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 I've came in up with that but i am literally the pole wrestle champion i'm the only person in the challenge that's never lost a pole wrestle and has won more than three so i'd have to promote that there you go Either that or my bit. that's Either a that unique or my answer that's a very unique one pole challenge jp but it's like it looks like the hardest thing in the world to do especially if you're going up against like ct or fessy or yeah guys <laughs> yeah yeah it is it is really is nice okay so I, earlier i mentioned that's it right nick that's your five yeah that's all i got all right i gotta have i got two more for you and one of these i don't bring out to every guest but um i felt compelled earlier forgot why but backstory okay this is a basic question you probably get a lot it is literally one of the main questions that you ask when you work in radio it's just a, a filler question and uh, but it is it is morphed um about 15 years, uh, 10 years ago, after asking the question for many, many years, um, a certain character, I will tell you who it was after you answer it, answered this question so profoundly, it blew my mind. And I literally took me another 10 years. It was Johnny Depp, wasn't it? No, it was, it was not Johnny Depp. Depp. It was Jack. <laughs> it, 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 the, the run. It, it took 10 years for another person to answer it as good as that person answered it. So no pressure, by the way. Um, and then we got like three or four guests in a row recently who came real close. So that is the only hint you get before this question. Here we go. Don't overthink it. What is one thing you can't leave the house without? Um, diapers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, and that's, that's, you know, a perfect great answer, especially in your world. Um, it's generic. It's, it's, that's what we expect. Now I'm interviewing George Thorogood and he says, without skipping a beat, says, George, what's one thing you can't leave the house without? And he goes, kissing my wife. And I went, Oh it's my, sucks. right. <laughs> 
Now we all feel like assholes, right? Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, so I, 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 I'm on the lookout I'm for not, many guests. Lie here, okay, I'm not going to lie here, right? Yeah. My 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 partner will be more impressed the fact that I said diapers. Than <laughs> I get I'm you. Say that. So uh, if, she that. if she watches this, if she watches this. I should okay. watch it. Yeah. Yeah, throw us a comment on the on the YouTube comments that that <laughs> yeah. that you know if and when you watch this that that's a, that is correct. All right, Kyle Christie from the Challenge and Jordy Shore and a whole crap ton of other shows that we mentioned earlier <laughs> at the beginning of this show because I'm not sure I can repeat that intro. The final question we have for you, I like to think of it as one of the most important questions we ask on the show. I try to ask it of every single guest, um, and that is if you could impart one piece of advice onto any new father or about to be dad, what is that advice going to be? I would say just be awake. Just be awake and be present. First six months, you've got to be there because if you're not there, you just got to stand next to her. Basically, you just got to hold stuff. So like, <laughs> say, she'll be like, hold this and you'll be like, yeah. hold that. You just got to hold it. Like that's, that's all your job is at the start and you just got to make sure you're there. Just be present. There you go. Easy peasy. That is good. Good advice from Kyle Christie. Kyle, man, dude, it's been fun. It's been fun, guys. I've enjoyed myself. We appreciate I'll you. Come, you. I'm coming back on with my dad. Yes. Let's do from that. From the pub. Let's make it happen. How about yep. we just fly out, Nick, and we do it all in person at the pub? Yes, perfect. I'm yes. freaking oh, in. I will, I will, I will fly me and my dad out. Ooh, <laughs> how about we'll all meet in Hollywood Beach, Florida, because I love fish tacos, and we could just do it in, like, perfect weather and maybe take a trip down to Key West because it's freaking beautiful. It's what I do every year, and I haven't gone yet this year, Nick, and it's getting late because we're getting to hurricane season, and I'm talking about shit we shouldn't right now anyway, but, yeah, I love <laughs> these ideas. Taco sounds fucking delicious. I know. I haven't even made my own ones yet, but that's neither here nor there. He is Kyle Christie. Check him out on uh, – it, it, I didn't even ask that question. <clears throat> is there any TV in the future at all? Uh, yeah, so I, I will be back on the challenge one day, but I don't know when. I've got to be a dad yet, so gotcha. that's it. But I, I, my, my show, Geordie Show, is back on screens, and that'll be coming out in uh, September. And gotcha. that'll be on Paramount Plus. So, so you, you everyone can, check that out. If they want to see Kyle in action, that's where you go. To everyone watching and listening worldwide, wherever you may be, however you may be listening, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and uh, checking out the show. He is Kyle Christie. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all the commenting. Nick, you got something to say? I guarantee it. I got nothing. And thank don't you. forget to check out our brother podcast. Oh, shit. <laughs> The Rockstar Dad Show with Jarrett and Gary from Bowling for Soup. <laughs> there right, you guys. go. And thanks to our sponsors, of course, Lions Not Sheep, Redcon One Weapons out of Eagle Point, Oregon. We will catch you on the very next episode next week. Have a great rest of your day. Kyle, man, you're amazing. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. 